Greetings everyone, I'm Mar. Once again, this is my opinion. Every now and then, in life, we do things that either immediately afterwards, or sometimes later, we're like, oh, I should have done that a little differently. Could have done that a little differently. We have regrets. It's just the nature of humans and life. Which, of course, leads eventually, as time goes on further, to the two most dangerous words in the English language when used together, what if. Today's episode touches a little bit on that, but it lingers more on the regret and ruminating on, ah, man, should have done that differently. This, of course, is episode 7 of season 5 of Everybody Loves Raymond, The Walk to the Door. Before I get too far into it, just a reminder, if you do want to support the channel, the Patreon link is down below. You'll gain access to videos early, and you will also be able to suggest the topics for future videos. And if you just want to do a one-off support or a one-off request, the PayPal link is also down below. Walk to the Door. This is another Tucker Kali episode, and another good one. Nice little dynamics between the characters. Good old Tucker always seems to be able to do that. Now, the plot is the Barones, all of them, Frank, Marie, Robert, the lot, are going to a wedding. It's not a family wedding, it's more like a neighborhood wedding, because they're invited by someone that they knew from the neighborhood. And they're going to see a lot of people that they haven't seen in years, people that either moved away or they just run out of contact with. And you, and that's another thing you kind of will connect with if you're watching this episode, whether for the first time or after many years and you, you're older is that people come out of your life, whether it be family, friends, just people you know in the neighborhood, they'll come in and out. Sometimes forever they'll leave, and then you'll be like, hey, I wonder what they're doing. Other times they'll come back in and be like, hey, I haven't seen you since high school. Oh, yeah, you're looking good. It, t it only touches on that a little bit, but it ties into the bigger regret pool because they mention once their name, and Ray's like, oh, the Greenies are going to be there? And it turns out that he had a short little high school fling with someone named Garini, and she's going to be at the wedding. Uh, they, ca they call it a fling, but it was more one date, as Ray puts it, where they went to a dance at her school. And the way Ray makes it out to be is that he felt sorry for her, which, from what we've heard about Ray in high school and all that, and how he's looked at as an adult by some people, we're looking at it like, really? He felt sorry for her? But it sounds like she was a little bit introverted as a high schooler so Ray being a little bit more extroverted I guess that's why he felt sorry for her so he went but this is where the regret part comes in they left the dance early because of the snowstorm and the fact that he was borrowing Frank's car which when he brings up the whole car thing at first Frank is like what what what'd you do to the car but then we find out nothing he's like dang straight when Ray says that he wanted to take the home car home so Frank wouldn't get on him and of course Frank staying 100% committed there, yeah. Well, it's a twofer. Not only did they leave the dance early, which his date could probably understand a little bit there. Like, oh yeah. Elizabeth, that's her name. I'm looking at my notes right now. He could understand that. However, it's the next part where you look at it and go, really, Ray? Even me, who hasn't had that many, has only had a handful of serious girlfriends, know that this is something you should probably do. At least to the best of your ability. You pulling up to a house, especially in a snowstorm, yeah, you want to do this. And that is, he didn't walk Elizabeth to the door. And I guess it's eaten up at him a lot since then. Maybe off and on. But it's one of those things where you hear it and you go, really, Ray? That's eating you up? I could see for a while. But it's one of those things that maybe, after a while, you'll start with the what-if-isms. And just like, yeah, it happened. But of course, as we're going to find out in another episode, uh, I don't have the box set up, but I think it's going to be in this season, but I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry about this little little monologue. I just want to make sure it's this season or not. Uh, Super Bowl, no, 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 no. No, no, there's two. No. Uh, if I'm looking at it right, I don't think it's this season. Uh, it'll probably be the next season then. It's the one with Ray's breakup tape. That one I, I really get a little bit more than this one because that is one of those ones that's like, huh. But when you look at that one and you look at the bigger continuity show and you look, bring this up, you're like, huh. 
another reason why I'm starting to think even accidentally the Ray might be ADHD, like I brought up in another episode, but who knows, maybe I'm just reading too much into it. That's the whole death of the author thing, because I don't think they intended that. <laughs> if I asked Ray in real life if I ever met him, he'd probably be like, yeah, we didn't intend that. Now they get to the reception after the wedding, you know, we're not going to see the wedding proper. They're seated in the corner, which makes sense, because they're neighborhood friends, and Frank is, of course, annoyed by this, but that's how Frank would be. I mean, he was the one that threw his own wife under the bus when, in season one, her sister was trying to ruin the funeral, and then they brought up the cold veal, and he mentioned the portions were small, so it's in keeping with Frank's character there. He even kind of snips at one of their little table mates. Well, conversations go on. You know, they start talking about regrets. You know, Marie mentions some regrets she has, besides Frank is a big regret. Of course, she's a little jest there. Regrets not toughening up Ray more as a kid. Which i kind of going to have to put a little grain of salt on that. I really don't think she regrets that. Maybe just a little bit, but not the way she's making it out to be. And then, of course, Ray's trying to go, well, I'm tough. That's going to be something that'll pop up in another episode or two. And then, of course, her whole regret with Deborah. I wish I was trying to make you more nurturing and all that. That's just Marie sticking to her thing to be a little snippy and passive-aggressive. But based on what we've heard about Nana Barone, Nana Barone was probably worse, which, of course, with Frank and all that, just hold that thought with him, because once we get to a later season, we're going to get a little bit more of that. We've already gotten a little bit of it, but we'll get it way, way more. Well, Deborah pushes it because she wants to hear something that he regrets doing to her, which, of course, my constant watchers, we know that just watching their lives from season one to this part, that there's a lot of stuff he has done that he should regret doing to her. Taping football over the wedding video, stealing back the engagement ring in order to replace a bad diamond and inadvertently throwing away her grandmother's diamond that was worth a lot of money. All the other random stuff. Those are just some of the big ones. And yet he can't think of something like that. So what does he do? As we find out later in the show, he steals one of Robert's regrets. He just frames it, changing some of it, so it seems a little bit more plausible. And he says when it happened, so that it's long enough ago to where Deborah could be like, yeah, that might have happened, but I don't recall that. That must have been so small, but it's eating you up alive. The event is, I'm going to give how Ray says it happened, and then I'm going to tell you what actually happened with Robert. And it kind of is a little timely since we've just seen Joanne. Now, Ray's version of events is that right after they started dating, they went to a party at his editor's house. And during the course of events, she decided to try to break the ice because the only person there she knew was Ray. She makes a joke. No one laughed. They don't give an idea what the joke is. But it's probably one of those things that different senses of humor and all that. Where you try to read the room and the joke bombs. It's like, <laughs> laugh nervously. But Ray doesn't laugh either. And he's always felt bad about that, you know, that you're kind of a little bit embarrassed by it. Now, with Deborah, when you hear that, you're like, it must have been a really bad joke, or race friends have a very different sense of humor than her, and he just happens to fall under both senses of humor. And, of course, you can see why so long ago that Deborah would be like, huh, I don't actually recall that. Now, what actually happened is that when Robert and Joanne were first going out, back when he was just a normal patrolman, they went to a party at his sergeant's house. And Joanne did the same thing, told a joke, and nobody laughed. Now, from what we've seen of Joanne and her two appearances, it's a little bit more obvious <laughs> why nobody laughed, because with how she is, either she's going to tell the joke badly and it loses all of its impact, or the joke's just not funny unless you have a very niche sense of humor. And nobody laughed, and of course, he was sorry that he la didn't laugh either. Now, of course, that's just a minor thing, but that kind of sets the tone for Robert and Joanne's relationship up until their marriage in general. Just wah, wah, wah. Should have let her go then, Robert. And, of course, the way that Deborah reacts when she finds out that Ray stole Robert's regret. Oh, boy. Very fitting. She is mad. I just love, though, Patricia Heaton plays this off well as she's getting mad at him that all of a sudden you hear the... Sorry, I don't have any glass stuff around here. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I do. 
All of a sudden we hear, she turns around, the newlyweds are kissing. She's like, oh, they're kissing. Then like a dime, she turns back to Ray and starts yelling at her. It really shows how great Patricia Heaton is as an actress, that she can go from angry to, oh, back to angry like that. You can see why she's the Emmy winner at this point. And of course, it makes you wonder what must be going through Ray's head at that time. Like, no, 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 briefly, briefly. Ah, she's good. Oh, man, crap, back in it. Now, of course, before all this, the little bit of dialogue that uh, Robert says before he starts telling the story, I just love what he says. Regrets. Hmm, quite a menu. Which, of course, he does have a lot of regrets, too. I mean, just from this season alone, he's going to have a lot of regrets. But I've already talked about some of them, and the rest of it, I'll wait until those episodes actually pop up. Now, before we start to end, there's a little bit of... There's like a one-liner we get from Ray about his haircut. Which, in the blooper reel, there's so many different alternate lines of that. <laughs> which, they're pretty funny. Like, uh, like Ray does a, a literal low blow talking about... Brad's generals, which is a uh, often, which is a gag that comes up off and on on the blooper reel, and of course, he breaks character a little bit because Brad goes back into his normal voice, like last time I get dressed with you. <laughs> but of course, I'll talk about that gag again when we get to the suit episode. Now, the real meat of this whole regret thing involving Elizabeth comes a little bit after this. Now, one thing I kind of skipped over is that they do bump in to Elizabeth on the dance floor. And Ray decides to apologize about the walk thing. But he tries to bring it up nonchalantly. Which the way he does it, it's like, really, Ray, you think that's nonchalant? Now, Elizabeth plays it off like, I hope you didn't, you haven't been having that gnaw at you for all these years. Like, no, 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 I just remembered it now. I'm really sorry about it. It's all right. Now, she's there with the husband, which is where a lot of the joke stuff starts coming up. And why Deborah eventually leads into, uh, I hope you have a regret about me. Now, with how the episode ends, I'm not going to jump there. It does sound like Elizabeth was hurt by the fact that Ray did not walk her to the door. And the fact that uh, one of the people jumps up and says something. Kind of makes me think that she probably was like, oh no, Ray's going to be there? That she might have been having the same type of anxiety. Be like, oh no, and her husband trying to reconcile. Like, it's okay. Uh, it's like, you probably won't even remember it. And then when he brings it up, that probably starts the anxiety again. And when she gets back to the table, it's like, oh no, he actually brought it up. He apologized. Like, I mean, that guy actually apologized for it? Huh, wonder if... And then they have a whole side conversation, probably a flip conversation that the Barones had. A nice little foil to it. Obviously, we're never going to see it, but it's one of those things that's very fun to imagine. All based on one character interaction on the dance floor and then one line of dialogue from an old man. Which, by the way, it's uh, Vicky Judas who plays Elizabeth. And she does a pretty good job at it. You really do believe that she is the character that uh, the Barones were talking about in the car, all grown up, married now. Probably not as introverted as she was before, but some of the tendencies still there. And of course, probably some other self-doubt and all that still packed in there. That's stuff that we're left to fill in the blanks on. Now, before we get to the scene involving Elizabeth and the old man at the table, of course, we find out a secret that Marie has been carrying. Now, this is her regret of the episode, and that is she technically masterminded the date between Ray and Elizabeth. She bumped into Elizabeth and told Elizabeth that Ray thought she was cute and, you know, a nice dresser and that maybe she should ask her him out to the dance. And Ray, of course, jumps to big conclusions with it like oh it was a pity date well there's a possibility that that's true but there's also the possibility that elizabeth might have had like a small crush on him genuinely but didn't want to do anything you know introverted and all that or knew ray but didn't think of anything but then just hearing what his mother said and then you know actually interacting with him a little bit you know seeing him a little bit like yeah he is cute and maybe just did it and it was a pity date, but maybe she actually, during the course of events before Ray decided to take the car home, was like, oh, you know what, maybe he's nice, maybe I'd like to see him again. And then Ray went and ruined that by not walking her to the door, Then she's like, what did I do, what did I do? I mean, a lot of this is just subtextual stuff that's open to interpretation, of course, other than what Marie does say here. It's just one of those things that you sit there and think about, like, hmm, I wonder. It's part of the reason I say that what if it's the two... Most dangerous words in the English language, especially when you're in analysis mode. 
And of course, Ray decides to rush to the table, say some more stuff, and that's what leads to the old man, played by Fred Ornstein, who was also in So I Married an Axe Murderer, Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction, and rest in peace, by the way, he passed away in 2016, leads to Fred saying, that's the guy who didn't walk into the door? Which, based on the way he says it, and how the scene is shot, that's why I think that they were talking about what happened at the table, just from the other side. And that's the last of the scenes at the wedding. Now, the kids do have a couple things to do, but it's mainly go dance the bunny hop with Robert. Dun, 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 dun. Of course, the end scene is everybody in the car. Ray and Robert are the only ones still awake. They're driving. And <laughs> the, the scene stealer part here is the last exchange before it cuts to the credits. Want to go out to the woods and leave Dad out? Yes, rub some honey on his ass and blow a bear whistle. I, I would love to see that scene. Marie! <laughs> Running from a bear. <laughs> Robert had to deal with a, a bull. Frank has to deal with a bear. <laughs> Just a fun little thing. I, I'd love to see somebody Photoshop that if you can. And it's a nice little ending to a very stressful day for the Barones. But it's another day in the life of the Barones, perfectly captured by Tucker Colley and perfectly acted and directed. Definitely a episode that could have taken place only in Season 5. I mean, maybe 4, but with the kids and all that, I think they're at the proper age for this. And it's nice to have a little bit more development about Ray as a teenager, showing just how, even though she was good in other regards, how... I don't know if overbearing is the right way to put it, but a little bit, but how controlling Marie could be, even down to dictating who he dated then. I mean, we still see that as an adult. We saw that in Season 3. She's not the girl for you, Raymond. We're still going to keep seeing more and more of it, which is like, this is where Amy's lines from Season 3 really do ring true. Sometimes a mother should just butt out, which is true. There are times where, as a parent, you got to bring the hammer down, and there are times where you got to know to back up and be like, okay, let's... It all ties into something Christopher Titus said, you know, give you knowledge versus allow you to learn on your own. Dating, give some knowledge, allow you to learn on your own the other ways. All in all, it's a pretty fun episode. Definitely a season five episode you shouldn't skip, uh, which kind of interesting because the next episode is one that is into the you can skip this one. But it's not like a super, super skippable one. It's one that I will watch on occasion, like for this one. It does have a commentary on it. But if you are trying to watch Robert's romantic arc and you're going to watch all the episodes involving his dating life, especially if you're watching it from when he broke up with Amy, excuse me, when Amy broke up with him in this season to when they are eventually going to get back together, this is definitely on the must watch one. And of course, is going to be called Young Girl. And I'm going to leave you, those of you who have not watched this episode yet, but are watching them along or watching them before you watch the reviews there because there's a lot of things that that title can give you and for those of you who are watching this who are watching the episodes along with me who are re-watching a lot of them you already know what's coming up with this one until next time guys